Okay. Uh, in a previous video, we talked about many of the features of this model itself without this uh, any the part of the intestines with it and also the pancreas and the duodenum and so on. Uh, so here we wanted uh, to show you the actual position of this sample if we take it out. First we want to talk about this and we have some things left there. Inshallah we'll talk about it in this video. Uh, yes, so first uh, we couldn't find the stomach model. It would have been much nicer. But anyways, this is the beginning of the duodenum. Okay? It's uh, passing in a, in a C-shaped format uh, to the right and uh, then back to, uh, to the left as it uh, terminates at its junction of the jejunum. Okay? These are the folds of the uh, jejunum and IDM. So it's located near here, its junction. Okay? Around here. Uh, in the, these are the plica circularis. Okay. This is the entrance of the bile duct. And here, of course, this is the major duodenal papilla. This is the ampulla vata. And the, there is a thickening of muscle to form the sphincter of Audi. Okay? So beware of the, any of the detail. This is the papilla. This is the ampulla. And this is the sphincter, this region. Okay? If we put the any back for just the origin of this bile duct, and the, uh, we can also bring the liver. Of course, we talked about the liver previously in another video. Uh, so, here, uh, here, imagine it. This is the bile duct. And now imagine it. Here, this is the bile duct also. Okay? So, if we, this is the bile duct going down into the duodenum. And it's mainly uh, I mean, this bile duct that actually determines the separating line between the foregut origin of the duodenum and the midgut origin of the duodenum. Okay? Uh, this is the portal vein. It's formed from the uh, superior mesenteric and splenic. And the splenic, this is the splenic itself, and it receives the inferior mesenteric. Asha? This is the superior mesenteric artery. Again, we said because of the uh, origin of the pancreas, it passes behind it, except, it's not visible, except for the uncinate process. You can see it's going anterior. This is anterior, this is the pancreas. This, you can't see the superior mesenteric artery because it's behind the pancreas, but at the uncinate process, it passes in front of it. It's just the uncinate process of the pancreas. This is the body of the pancreas and the tail of the pancreas. Where is it going? It's going to the spleen. It's reaching the hilum of the spleen. Also has embryological origin. And uh, uh, other features in this aspect. Okay. Yes, the ducts. This is, this is the main pancreatic duct. All right. Of course, it joins the bile duct and then enters into the duodenum. And uh, this is the accessory pancreatic duct if present. And of course, for the name of the ducts, the, this is the main pancreatic duct of Worsen, and this is the accessory pancreatic duct of Santorini. <laughs> Uh, and again, if we you know, discuss the embryological origin again, uh, when the ventral butt rotates posteriorly, uh, the whole duct of the ventral butt uh, forms this part of the main pancreatic duct. And the uh, distal part of the dorsal pancreatic duct forms this part of the main pancreatic duct. So in about 10% of people, they, they fail to fuse, so you have this accessory pancreatic duct as the proximal part of the dorsal pancreatic butt, okay? And uh, the intestines. This is the mesentery. Of the, this is the transverse mesocolon, by the way, in case we forget it later. Uh, here we have the junction with the ilium. This is the ilium, it's not the appendix, okay? The ilium opening into the uh, large intestine. So this is the cecum. This is the opening of the appendix. Remember, it's caudal. It's initially caudal and becomes postromedial, but it's still caudal. Here's the appendix on the right side. And of course, the tinea coli is supposed to you know, merge here and disappear. It's kind of disappeared, but it's obvious to say the appendix. In this case, we can say it's a retrocecal. Uh, then, 
And these are the placa circularis of the ilium. They disappear in the large intestine. You don't have placa circularis. And what we forgot in the previous model is that the large intestine has hostrations or circulations. Okay? And we also mentioned that it has the tinea coli, which is the thickening of the uh, muscularis externa. Okay? Okay, this is the ascending colon. This is the hepatic flexure or the right colic flexure. This is the transverse colon. This is the splenic flexure or the left colic flexure or junction. And this is the descending colon until it terminates at the sigmoid colon. So here, this is the sigmoid colon, S-shaped or whatever. And its tinea coli terminates at the rectum. There's no rectum in that sample, okay? As for this is the greater omentum, of course. And because the greater omentum is also supplied by omental branches, and yeah, the, meaning epiploic branches, omentum is epiploic. Uh, so uh, these are supposed to be branches of left gastroepiploic artery. Because as the name suggests, gastroepiploic means supplies the stomach and also the omentum. And uh, behind, again, this is the right side. You know. This is is the right side, and the right side is mainly supplied by the superior mesenteric artery, left side mainly by inferior mesenteric artery. So, this is supposed to be the superior mesenteric artery. And in this sample, it's actually much better than the other, because it's higher up than the inferior mesenteric. And it's given off, as we can say, this is the middle colic, and this is the, as we can say, the right colic, the ileocolic, and this is supposed to be the continuation that should anastomose or the ileocolic. Of course, the jejunal ileal branches are not obvious. They are supposed to come anteriorly. And this is the inferior mesenteric artery, the level of L3, it arises. Uh, given of the left colic, the sigmoidal, and the superior rectal. Uh, this is not rectal, but anyways, let's say this is superior rectal. <laughs> okay. And, uh, okay, this is basically what we know of this sample. I can't think of anything else. And a few things left from this sample. As I said, we've already explained this, but some things we have forgotten. This is the median sacral artery going down. Okay. These are the lumbar arteries arising from the aorta. Okay. So the lumbar veins draining into the inferior vena cava. And just, uh, ah yes, we also forgot the psoas minor muscle. Here is it, here it is. And also on this side. It's a variation. Not a variation, but not, you know, many people have it. And, uh, This could be the internal iliac, I don't know, divided into branches. I haven't taken the pelvis yet. And that's it. And one final thing is this superficial inguinal lymph nodes. And uh, below the level of the umbilicus, all the lymph from the abdomen drains here.